welcome to Harness Your Intuitive Superpowers, a place where you learn energy secrets that busy professionals need in order to thrive beyond mediocrity and embody extraordinary success and abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Amira Hall, and today I'm super excited to bring to you my guest, Christy Whitman. Christy has been on her own spiritual journey for several decades. And Christy is a two times New York Times bestselling author. Christy's a messenger of light. She's a channel of the council that are spiritual mentors that carry a message all about quantum energy mastery. Prior to working with the council for 15 years, Christy was a transformational leader, a manifestation mentor, and a law of attraction expert. She's the author of Taming That Alpha Bitch. And she's also the author of the international best-selling book, Quantum Success. She's the proud creator of a very special program called Watch Your Words. You're going to learn more about that later. And so I am so excited to bring to you and welcome Christy Whitman. So how do we kick this off? You've been on your path for so long. How did you get into life coaching that then transitioned into being an emissary for the Council of Light? It's interesting. I first became an author and started speaking on the contents of my book. It was my very first book that was downloaded through me. So that was really the first introduction to the council. I was sleeping 105 in the morning. I was getting, it was like someone or something was whispering, talking in my ear and I was listening and I got, had to get up because what I was hearing was so impactful for what I was going through at the time. So it was like my guides were talking to me and I got up and started putting pen to paper and old fashioned journal, not computer. And I just started writing and I was writing and writing and writing and for a couple of hours and then went back to sleep, totally forgot about it. And the next morning when I woke up, I saw this download and I was like, wow, that's what I've been, that information is what I've been seeking for what I'm going through right now. And then the next night, 105, same thing for seven seven nights in a row. And so I thought, huh, I think this is a book. And so I contacted Terry Cole Whitaker. I'm sure you remember Terry Cole Whitaker. Yeah, Terry from San Diego. Yes. Terry was just many years ago, was speaking at a religious science church. Uh-huh. And I, she was the only person at that point in time that I knew was an author. And so I emailed her and I said, I think I'm writing a book. How do you get a book published? And so she said, go online and look up literary agent. Now, this is 23 years ago. This is when I first submitted my book. It was, it was 2000, what is it, 2000? 2000, I can't remember, 2000, 1999, it was 1999. And, and so the internet wasn't what it is now, obviously, in 1999. And so I looked up literary agent and there was a picture of a guy that popped up and he said, I'm a publisher and a literary agent. So I sent the book, the manuscript, in its rawest form to him. He accepted it. He was a print-on-demand publisher. It was all so flow. And I was like, ooh, this, this is so easy to get a book published, right? Uh huh. And uh, so he published the book. And then I had my family and friends who were not in this conversation with me about energy and about law of attraction. And they all thought I just flipped my lid how I was talking about in this book, energy. And so I figured they're not my target audience. Oprah wasn't calling. So I figured <laughs> it's like she hadn't gotten my number yet. So I decided to start going out and speaking in spiritual bookstores and churches like Terry Cole Whitaker had. And so I happened to be going about two and a half hours down south to Sacramento because I was living up north in Redding, California at the time. And I would go and speak in this spiritual bookstore called East West Bookshop. And so I was doing workshops. And at first, the first one, I had six people in a room. And all of them kept asking me, are you a coach? And I'm like, what do you, like, football? what is that? Because in 99, there was no coach. That's it. You had an athletic coach for football. Ugh. I had been a cheerleading coach for seventh and eighth grade <laughs> girls. So that's why I was like, how'd you know I was a coach? And they're like, no, a life coach. And I'm like, yeah. because I'm like, why would you want a cheerleading coach? So it was this very confusing conversation. I'm like, life coach. And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, 
people get paid for that? Back in 99, I think that was just the beginning. There was somebody starting and launching because I remember the whole scenario too. Yeah. And it was like that Saturday Night Live skit with, oh, I forget his name when he's like a public speaker and he's, I live by a va- in a van down by the river. And that's how co- co- people that were coaching they didn't have it as a successful full-time business. They did it as a side thing, right? Like an Uber driver now, right? That's what a life coach, if you were a life coach, there wasn't a lot of certified coaches back then. And so I was really interested in it. And I just said, just call me on the phone. And so I would have these people call me and I could read their energy. I could get, I was getting the guidance from the council at the time. And I was telling them, like teaching them on law of attraction, what I understood at that point. I was coaching them in a very informal way. And I was loving it because they were coming back to me going, oh my gosh, I manifested the guy. Oh my gosh, I manifested the job. I got the pay raise. All these wonderful things were happening for them. And then I started having, because I was a pharmaceutical sales rep at the time. And I started, I was applying all that I was learning and I kept winning awards and getting recognized and getting certificates and getting bonuses. And all the people on my sales team were like, let's just give it to her. So we had four different medic- <laughs> yeah. we had four different medications that we were selling. And they were like, just don't even bother going through the formality of it. Just give her all four of her certificates and all four of her bonuses and let's get on with the meeting. So yeah. one one woman next to me was like, What do you do? I want to know what you do. Very intelligent woman named Latricia, right? And she goes, I'll pay you. I want you to teach me what you do. And so I said, okay. So I started coaching Latricia. She was at the lower rings of the entire company. It was like 400, I can't remember at this point, but 450 sales reps. She was like 445 or something like that. Within a very short period of time, she got up to the top 15% and won President's Trophy, which is the big coveted award. And she also got a job promotion. She made a 30% raise. It was a lot of things were happening for Latricia. And she was my very first client. And then she referred me to a friend of hers who was making $50,000 a year, had a desire to make $100,000 a year, worked with me within 12 months. She was making $97,000. I remember she was so disappointed because she had, hadn't hit her goal. And I was like, oh, Shanda, like, come, on. Shanda come on. You went from $50,000 to $97,000. Oh. Yeah, it was like really, you got to look for what's right and good instead of the fact that you were $3,000. Like you really shot far and scored kind of thing, coached her into that. And then I went for certification and I got certified to because I wanted to do this full time. So I was doing my professional eight to five yeah. job and then I was coaching nights and weekends and I just absolutely loved it. And so in 2006, I went full time into my own coaching business and haven't looked back. So. Well, that is fantastic. Bravo. Now, did you study the principles of science of mind? I did. Yeah. That was part of my early, yeah. my early right. upbringing, if you will. Yeah. I studied everyone. If you remember back then, there wasn't a internet that you could go in. There wasn't no. a movie called The Secret. There wasn't any of that. And so to learn about law of attraction or any of the universal laws, It wasn't even like just going into a bookstore and picking up a bunch of books. I literally was drawing it and attracting it to me. And you'll love this story, Dr. Amira. I was literally, this is how everything opened up for me. I was getting my hair cut. I had just moved from Chicago to San Ramon, California. And I moved there for a guy. And I did a lateral move with the company I was working with. And the one person that this gentleman, before we broke up, introduced me to was this girl named Janine, who was a hairdresser. So I go in to get my hair cut, and Janine had a way about her that was so different than any other human that I had ever met. It was, you know, that scene in Harry Met Sally when they're like, I'll have what she's having, right? She was so bubbly and a different kind of personality bubbly. There was an energetic connection that she had. And finally, being as blunt as I am, I'm like, okay, what do you do? And she goes, I meditate. And for me, this was, and this is 28 years ago now. For me, it was like meditate. I never knew anybody that meditated. No, you mean Medicaid, right? Because you're in drug business. (laughs) Right. It was like, yeah. (laughs) Medicaid? No, meditate. (laughs) And. I just, I didn't know anybody that meditated. And so my idea of this frame of reference, right? 
my frame of reference in my mind was some guru guy with light white long hair with the long beard sitting in a white yogi white yo robe sitting in yogi style only sitting on the top of the mountain and here it was like the total opposite she was a chick a hip chick from san ramon great style great personality she had a husband and a dog she was a very normal everyday person and i went what blown and so she goes i'll give you my meditation teacher's phone number so i made it i was if you remember the phones back then they were like big bricks oh, yeah, right funky. <laughs> yeah so i'm call dialing her in, in meditation teacher as i'm leaving the salon and Melanie didn't call me back. And so I, I called her back, finally got on the phone about a week later. And she says, sure, come out to my house. I'll give you the address and we'll have a consultation. And so I go to this house and she's got new age, clinky, clanky music. She's got candles, statues of angels and incense and all this stuff. And she invites me to sit in her living room, which had absolutely no furniture in there except for the cushion on the floor. And instead of a couch or a chair, and I'm like, what? Again, so different than the way I was raised. So I sit down and she looks at me deeper into my soul than anybody ever had. She looked deep into my eyes, like pierced my soul. And she just stared at me and checked me out for a while, which was very uncomfortable, I will say at that point. In my life. And she said, you create your own reality. And when she, rock, when she said that to me, I was like, yes, I do. Oh, you did. Okay. I just, I knew it. It was true. I'd never heard that before. I don't know how I knew it, but I was like, yes. And then all of a sudden I went, how? That was my yeah. next, I was like, yeah, wait, how? And she said, by the, by the thoughts that you think, you're either repelling things from you or attracting things to you based on the way you think. Now, this was another like moment oh, I, for me. Yeah. Because I'm like, the way I think, my like, I thought my thoughts were real. Like, I was my thought. That's how, you know, identified I was with that. The reality, yeah. Yeah, as most people are when they first wake up to this. And so she gave me an assignment. She goes, I want you to go home for just about a week and we'll reschedule. And she said, I can see that you're blown away, that your thoughts are different than who you are and that thoughts are what you think, not who you are. So I want you to pay attention to your thoughts. And so I started hearing myself for the first time, not just believing and thinking that those were true, but hearing those thoughts. And boy, was I negative, judgmental, critical to everyone and everything, but mostly myself. I could walk by a mirror and have 10 cut downs not thin enough, not tall enough, not this enough, not. And I was like, wow, I had no idea this was going on. So I remember calling up my girlfriend who I've known since seventh grade. And I said, Dawn, I am so negative. And she goes, what are you talking about? You are one of the most bubbliest, like positive uh -huh. people I know. And I'm like, like she well, couldn't hear it or see it or identify with it. Something happened between my head and my mouth. Because inside here, it was like a secret beating up zone that I did. But then, and Anne, yes, she couldn't see it here at that point in time. The cut downs I was making on myself or the criticisms I was giving other people. She would criticize along with them. It was like our natural way of talking. Yeah, because it's you're matching or validating your peers. But also, yeah. I, we wear this mask, right? We are trained to present ourselves in certain ways out in the world to get what love yes to be appreciated to be recognized yeah so i went back to melanie the next week and i said okay i get it my thoughts are pretty negative and i want to change them how do i do that and then she introduced me to meditation and she goes i'm not going to teach you basic meditation so i want you to go over to this other woman named karen i go over to karen she's a absolute psychic she teaches people how to unlock their inner healer. I'm thinking I'm going for a basic 101 meditation class. And she teaches me how to open up my hands and my healing chakras and how to do a healing on somebody. And the first time this happened, someone was in the class and I started doing this to the back of their head. And all of a sudden the person just whipped around and looked at me and said, what are you doing? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> that's honest. I can feel the, I can feel the, yes. 
I'm going to walk on water next. <laughs> There's something happening here. Yeah. And, and so she could feel it. I could feel it. And it was really wild. And since that time, like opening up, I could definitely see energy. I could see auras. I see so many different things open. I could be like walking in the forest and seeing the energy around the, the plants. This was just such a great, huge opening for me during this time. And then Melanie taught me meditation, which was a very deep form of meditation that was practicing with energy. It was guided meditation on how to move energy and release imprints and release pain body and get into your light body. And so all of this was happening without me even being aware of what was happening. It was talking about being over your head. Like I was just like going along with it because it felt good, but I had no idea the foundation that was creating back then. I was just looking at the energy of a, a solid foundation. You didn't get steered down a windy path because mm -hmm. I know the path is winding, but what I mean is credible teachers, because I find today that is a very questionable, you know, process is for people to find that great teacher, right? Yeah. I don't know if you've experienced some of that yourself where the world of woo is pretty dangerous. Let's just say that if you don't know what you're dealing with. It can be because just like any profession, right? You can have lawyers that are sleazeballs all the way to people that are really in integrity. And like this industry, I've been in this yeah. industry 28 years now. And like this industry, there are some just incredible, fully walking the path of integrity with great intention that are living that space of abundance and success and also are in it for the right reasons. They're okay. grounded grounded and really great. And then there's other ones where I personally have had myself screwed over by I healers and, and it's painful, right? Yeah. When, when you trust someone that's a healer and then they come back at you because they have an ulterior motive. I would say, I don't like to caution people. Oh. It's like, just be aware, be aware. I, mean, I think it's too part of our le lesson in learning, you know, what, and to learn, yeah, just to learn those lessons of better choice back to intuition yes. and maybe learning how to trust. So, oh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how do we trust? How do we know when something, because I know I've made wrong choices along the way and kick myself for the choices. And sometimes I was absolutely certain that yeah. it was, I was accurate and it wasn't. It's exactly what you just said, Dr. Mira, is that people like like I've been attracted to on my path, I felt very strongly that I wanted to work with this person because they had something to teach me. And they did, right? Yeah, that wasn't what you thought, though. <laughs> they did. Sometimes it was something in the third dimension that I needed to learn, but then it was something even more like bigger for my soul. I, I learned to trust myself and trust my divine and not just focus on some other guru or somebody outside of me telling me what to do. It's like, how do you practice that muscle of intuition? It, you have to go, like you go to a gym, right? You pick up a small weight. And then how do you develop that? You pick up bigger weights. And as long as we're not getting stuck in the imprints and the, the hurts and the resentments and the betrayals, and it's really what the council right. has really come through me. And as a teacher of that, we're going to have contrast. We're going to have contrasting experience. Like I said, whatever profession, it could be plumbers, lawyers, teachers, mm -hmm. coaches, healers, right? There, there are people that are very aligned, but every single human being has a moment where we get out of alignment. And that moment of out of alignment could hurt somebody else, or mm -hmm. maybe they're stuck in their own pain points and they get stuck in lack. And then they do things that are out of alignment. So when we partner with that, when we co-create with that, we have, a, we have something that's a gift for us. And as the council says, this is a gift. All contrast is a gift. Look at it, open it up, right? Don't just avoid it or push it down because contrast exists. It's our resistance to the contrast that gets us stuck, that gets us imprinted, that creates more of our pain body. But if we learn how to process our emotions, we know how to process our energy and let go of it, let go of what doesn't feel good, then we have a different level of consciousness. What is consciousness? It's the awareness. It's our understanding. It's our knowledge, right? And we practice that by who we are in the world, by what we say. It's why watching our words is 
absolutely important by what we think, by what we perceive, by what we feel, and then what we do. And as long as we are keeping ourselves in that space of alignment with our words, our thoughts, our perspectives, our emotions, and our actions, then we're in integrity. We can't control what other people are doing, whether they do it all the time or they had a moment or a lapse in judgment. All we have influence is on ourselves and how we, what we perceive or flow with or push against someone or something. So there. <laughs> Yeah. So let's talk about the five most common obstacles that might be keeping us out of alignment or not connecting to our intuition. Well, we actually just talked about those. A lot Can of you times. Summarize that because yes. that's a great download. Yes. Channel. Yes. So our, a lot of times we internally have our own obstacles, right? We might see that, oh, this my boss or my husband or the government or the president or the neighbor or my mother-in-law or the money or success or all of that is my obstacles. And none of that, if we sign, oh, it's my mother-in-law or my parents did that or it's the government, or then that's out of our control, right? And, and then we're saying that all of our obstacles are outside of ourselves, which we have no influence on. We can't change, so then we play the victim. It's like we're victim to our circumstances. Our obstacles are either the words that we say. If we're saying words that are positive and uplifting and are moving towards our desires and what we want and that feel expansive, then there's no obstacles. But that's, when, that's why I created WatchYourWords.com and everybody has an opportunity to go there. It's a free gift we're going to talk about. But there are so many different words and phrases that start the whole energetics of what we create by what we say. Just even words like, I can't do that, or I can't afford that. That word can't, that's the obstacle, right? That closes down our energy, and therefore we can't outcreate from the word of I can't, because that creates momentum to what the second obstacle is, and that's our thoughts. When we create, I can't afford that. Right. The next thought usually is, oh, therefore I can't have it. That's not for me. That's for somebody else. That's a whole nother set of obstacles. It's creating that momentum to make our reality. And therefore, what our third obstacle is our belief, our perspective. Right. If we say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, everybody else gets to do that. I can't. We have an image in our mind of everybody else gets to succeed, but we're there like a victim. We can't seem to, there's a big old obstacle stopping us. And then, of course, that ha leads to our feelings. We then, another obstacle, we feel disappointed. We feel sad. Loser. Yeah, lose. Right. Yeah. We, we feel angry. I help them. I can't get what I want. And then the other obstacle is then we end up not taking any action. We do maybe do a behavior that, oh, instead of going and doing this, I'm going to go eat some ice cream or I'm going to just sit on the couch or maybe I'll drink or smoke or gamble or shop or sex around or whatever that is, that we're not doing the things that move us in the direction of what it feels expansive and good to move us towards that thing that we said we wanted. So the five obstacles, good news, bad news, are all those are inside of us. But the great news about that is it, you don't have to go change your husband in order to have that obstacle removed. You don't have to be born of a different ethnicity or a different country or a different family or, you know, of a different heritage. It, all of that is inside of ourselves. So again, words, thoughts, perspectives, emotions, and actions. Those are our obstacles. When you eliminate those obstacles, there's no more obstacles. Yeah, it's fantastic. I remember, yeah. I just, I, there's so many thoughts coming through my head right now. I think the channel, the council wants to come in. I don't know if you're feeling nudged, but my, all of a sudden my thought process is just went. Yeah. Like, I'll go ahead so and bring them in. I, I think I'll just pull and let them speak. I'll bring them in and let's see what they have to say. Yeah. But. I appreciate that. Woo. We are here, and you feel us here. We are delighted to be with each and every one of you. 
You are an extension of the divine here in a physical body. Your entire universe is based on vibration, energy. All energy carries frequencies and vibrations. You are the container for that ripple of energy. The beauty about it is you all get to choose the energy in which you bring in to your physical container. So you are an energy receiver. You are an energy container. And you are an energy transmitter. There are waves of energy going off. There's a vi very different particle energetic wave from someone who feels that they can't do something or that something is an obstacle or that something is stopping them from doing something, that's a very different energy than one that feels free or expansive or one that is in alignment with love or even compassion. Very different waves of energy and then it's a very different reality. How are you, dear one? We are happy to meet you in this way. Thank you. Thank you so much. What questions do you have for us? I'm looking at the, the theme of our gathering, and that is about harnessing our intuitive superpowers. Is there some special guidance that we can share that would in, enhance or facilitate the ease of that process? Yes. So most humans that are aware, your third eye, we like to call it your faith portal because faith is of one of your first superpowers. When you are directing your faith towards what you want, not towards what you don't want, that's creative. And when you are directing, and it's through your third eye that is the faith portal, it's like the flashlight of where you shine the light, that's what you then see. You can't go get more faith, but you can focus it in the direction that you desire. Most people have their faith. They wouldn't call it faith, but they have their focus, which then is what they believe in what they don't want or limitations. And when you find that you are focusing on limitations or what you do not want, you can refocus back on what you do want. What you, faith is not just in what you believe to or what you're connected to. It is in your third dimensional reality as a human being. What are you focusing on? Where is your energy? Where are you flowing your energy? Because that determines where you focus your faith. And as you are opening up your faith portal, that brings such a strength. As you are opening your faith portal up and focusing on the faith of what you desire, there's a strength. That strength comes in. We talk about this in quantum energy mastery. The strength portal is at the back, at the lower back. It is another portal. So it's like a teeter-totter. The strength and the faith and the strength have a movement together. As you become more faithful, you become more strengthful. You become more connected and feeling of a greater strength or a greater power is another way of saying that. And then as that moves into your front part, there's a greater wisdom. And it's beyond the mind wisdom. It's beyond the logic. It's wisdom that drops in. And this is where the God wisdom, this is where the divine wisdom comes in. And that's where you get the directions to write the book, to go in that direction, to follow this, to go there. Those strong intents like Christy was sharing of, I got to call this meditation teacher. I, I got to follow along and go to that meditation person who then taught her how to be open up to her healer. Following those strong urges that tell you to go right when logically you know you're supposed to go left, but you follow that guidance and wonderful things happen. And who knew? 
that way that you normally went, there was an accident. There was a barrier. What you wanted, the store was closed. When you follow the guidance, all things open up. And that brings you into your heart center and allows you to be all in the ultimate vibration. And that is the energy of love. Your heart center transmutes all of the other lower level energy. If you are an empath, when you fill yourself up with love, nothing else can get in. The higher vibration always transmutes the lower. So instead of being influenced by, lower level energies, you amp up your own energy. You find the level of compassion and love within you, and then you are the influencer of love. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is there specific practices that you would highlight for somebody that's wanting to activate their intuitive superpowers? Yes, just the asking of it, just the intention to do so sparks everything. First of all, you have to realize each and every one of you that you all have such a huge support team, infinite, and that when you ask, it is given. You all are, it's like you're the players on the field and the support team is in the stands. They are the providers. And when you are the initiator by creating an intention, just by saying, I'd like to be more connected, I'd like to have more greater guidance and intuition, that starts the cycle, that starts the opening for you. So just by the asking, that's a big one. And then to go into the next phase of it, of what would that feel like for you? If you were really guided and you felt that guidance 24-7 or in any situation, what would that feel like? It certainly wouldn't, you wouldn't feel constricted or worried or feel fearful. You would feel expanded. You would feel excited. You would feel that sense of, ah, calm. I'm directed. I'm looked after. And so practicing what it feels like to have that guidance creates that guidance. Wonderful. How do we be open to that? Is well, there some specific way that we can open ourselves to greater levels of that? Yes. Again, by your own willingness and your own willingness to connect with the energy. It's all about feeling the energy. And understanding that you're already connected to it. It's a wholeness. It's a oneness. Most human beings have to reprogram or get push away from, move out of away from their separation consciousness. Because it's the separation consciousness that tells them that it's something that you don't have and you have to go get it. Or that you're separate from. You haven't experienced it yet. Therefore, you got to learn something or do something or go get something. It is part of your innate nature. It is part of your own fabric and makeup. It's part of your divine design to collaborate and partner with the non-physical aspects of you. So as we said, by tuning your attention inward and upward, and asking and feeling what it feels like to be guided, this, uh, these are the first steps, dear one. I, I appreciate that. But I'm, what I'm thinking and trying to ask for somebody that's not in the presence physically at this moment is not trusting or believing when they, like I'm hearing, I don't feel the energy. I can't sense it as different than me. Okay, so... When someone feels it or thinks they are sending out waves, let's start there. Just by, and Christine, you talked about this, by the words that you speak, the very thoughts of, I am willing to be open to my guidance. Speaking and saying those words, thinking those thoughts of, I would love to have more connection to my guides. Having an image and a picture in your mind of what life would be like to be guided, to check in before you take an action, 
to feel your way in and go, something feels off. And therefore, I'm going to listen to that. And I'm not going to make a decision until I know it's a go. These are things that in your own consciousness. And then you get into the feeling. Do you feel good in the presence of this person or this thing or when you think about it? Or do you feel bad? Is there, do you feel connected or do you feel disconnected? So instead of going into the nuances and the subtleties of all the different energies and feelings, there's a part of our consciousness that has that, hey, I get a vibe from this. There's a no. If it's a little no, it's a no. They're feeling your way into that way. And that will then guide you as to either take this action or not, to go in this direction or not. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. I don't feel any more questions coming up at this moment. Beautiful. Is there any last words that you can... Uh, oh, you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> what <about> last words? <laughs> words? <laughs> we just... I, I, you're right. This is my first introduction, but I can only can imagine. <laughs> yes, we could go on and on. So, yes, we just want to say that we surround each of you in light and that please know, and many of you will hear this over time, but it is infinitely true. You are infinitely loved. Be well, dear ones. Oh, sweetie. Could li <laughs> liter I could literally feel him like that unplugging. <laughs> Woo! Boy, oh boy, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I would go in that vortex. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's pretty amazing. For those of us who are attuned to not. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. powerful. I mean, they're I don't... very beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that gracious okay. gift. I, I'm just thinking the first time I heard a channel, and I'm just going to say from my own personal experience of channeling, it's real. Yeah. So if anybody's questioning what just happened here, it's real. And you can just go have a glass right now. <laughs> That's not a thought, but it's real. Yeah. Yeah, my, my first teacher, Melanie, also was a channeler. And it's interesting because one of the very first things she told me, is she said, oh, you're a channeler. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then she channeled and I was like, what is happening? This is so weird. Why did her voice change? Why? Yeah. And, and she had a light above her. Like it was like a, one of those little floor lights. And she was doing this with her hands and the bull went. Oh, there, wow. was, there was so much voltage. And I was like, Okay, I'm a believer. It was wild. Yeah. So, so yeah. to hear, to see, to witness myself 28 years later doing this, it's it's pretty it's, wild. But yeah, it's wonderful. And there's a lot of different forms of channel, right? And yes, and people go into complete trance. It looks like you went into a little bit of a trance before you brought it, brought them in. I'm fully, my consciousness is fully out when they come in. So okay. I don't even, I don't remember anything that happens. I fully okay. go out and, uh, but when I'm, when I'm written all of my books, I'm working on my eighth book, all of them have been channeled. It's all a, I was just in Cabo with my family a couple of weeks ago and I was at the ocean and I just got this huge download and I had my phone or notepad or anything with me. And I'm like, I got to go back. It was like I was catching a baby that was about to come from the sky. And I was like, I got to go back. And I was trying to like, like listen to what I was hearing. And I, when I got in the room, it was like <laughs> just full download, full channeling coming out. Yeah. So it's such a gift. I'm so grateful. And those of those that are skeptical of it, hey, I get it. And those that feel the truth in it, lean into it. And after all these years on the path like you, I don't feel apologetic to anybody. I I want people to help to take a step to understand it and embrace it to and yeah. knows where you're going to end up. I remember in some of my first classes that like, don't think I'm going to do this as a profession, right? 23 years later, the joke is on me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Chrissy, I know that your time is valuable. I know you've got a very special gift for everybody here. Would you like to share that with us, what you'd like to everybody to experience? Absolutely. So for years and years, even before I was one person, first person channeling, I would do interviews, podcasts, different TV shows, and people would say to me, okay, this is very esoteric, right? This is very like 
energy. How do you bring this into practicality? What's the first thing that you do? And I kept hearing myself over and over afterwards say, you got to watch your language. You got to watch your words because our words are like our wands. They're the spark of creation, right? It's, I think it was Bruce, who's the Kung Fu guy, Bruce Lee, that said that, that words are cast spells, right? Because they're what we say. Powerful. Yeah, they're powerful. And so that's why we call it spelling, right? They cast spells. Watching your words is essential. And so then people started saying, what do you mean? What kind of words? And so I downloaded, again, as a way of channeling, 30 different words and phrases that people say that pull their energy down into drama, into struggle, into lack, into limitation. And if we just changed our words, just sometimes it's one word, one word, no, don't, don't should, can't, some of these words, that if we learn what to say instead, then we feel that more expansiveness. And so I created a free 10-day, it's actually a 30-day program. The first 10 days are complimentary. So you go to watchyourwords.com and you get the first 10 words and phrases. And just knowing those, they will make a huge difference in how you feel, what you perceive, and your own power. So it, that helps you open up to your superconscious. That's amazing. That is super exciting. And I can't wait to dive in myself. So I want to ask, is there any, well, how can people find you? The, I'm all over the place. Go, go, me, right? I've been, to us, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. So my main website is christywhitman.com. Any way you spell Christy or Whitman, you'll get there. I'm all over Instagram and Facebook and all that. But go to watchyourwords.com. That's the best way to learn, the best way to get started. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Hey, that's so gracious of you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your gifts, your insight, the inspiration. I just have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you so much for including yeah. me. And the council. Thank you for bringing them through to also. Oh, that, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, council. <laughs> yes. And everybody, thank you for being here. And I will see you real soon. Thanks again.